They say in traveling you will find peace and a sense of satisfaction. I may agree to that, but the only difference is I do travel alone. I want to share my bravest, coolest, and zaniest trip to the largest city in the Middle East, Cairo, Egypt. Downtown Cairo is the commercial heart of the modern city. As of 2016, Cairo has an estimated population of 12 million, with a metropolitan population of 20.5 million that makes it the largest city in the Middle East. Due to its erratic traffic conditions, you have to be ready at least two hours from your point of origin. Towards another direction, away from the laborious urban jungle is a place called Giza. Giza is located right on the banks of the Nile River. Among the famous impressive archaic historical structures are the Great Pyramids of Giza and the Great Sphinx. When I was in high school, I used to read about it through the history books. The intricate architectural details of the pyramids are still up to now a puzzle for me. The pyramids of Giza were built using techniques that took centuries to develop. The first and the largest stands 149 meters tall is known as the Great Pyramid and was considered as one of the seven wonders of the world. So, why did they choose the triangular shape? Why not square or a rectangle? It has been written that the sun was an important part of the Egyptian belief. To honor their sun god, some experts believe that the pyramid's sides represent the rays of the sun. I grabbed the opportunity to succeed in going inside the smallest of the three pyramids, the Pyramid of Menkyuri. It is one of the most famous of the 138 pyramids that have been discovered in ancient Egypt. This magnificent aggregate of elements and its tortuous anatomical structure is made of granite and limestone which lasts for eternity. While descending inside this pyramid, you need to hunch down in order to fit into the passageway. Inside it is a relatively small chamber and there is another opening on the far end. Though I cannot completely describe what was inside, the whole experience was extremely surreal for me. Heading towards the west bank of the Nile River is the Great Sphinx of Giza. It is a gargantuan stone carved out of limestone that takes the facial features of a man and a feline, and was believed to be a representation of a pharaoh. The ancient Egyptians built the Sphinx to guard important places like tombs and temples. Despite the hard properties of its material of the head, the face is badly damaged. While many of us assume that the nose of the Sphinx was the unfortunate victim of the target practiced by the Turks, while well, some say it was just through natural erosion. Citadel is defined as a castle that was used to protect the people of a city if the city was attacked. The citadel is sometimes referred to as Muhammad Ali Citadel because it contains the Mosque of Muhammad Ali which was built between 1828 and 1848. The Cairo Citadel is located on Makatam Hill in Cairo, Egypt. Located on top of a high cliff, it unveiled special locations that offer tourists with stately views over different sections of its capital. Originally, it was built as a royal home and also as military barracks by the ruler Saladin. Luka 
is a traditional sailboat of Egypt's night. The Fuluka ride is an hour and 30 minute cruise that brings you to a different kind of breather. It gives you an enticing panorama of the Nile River. It has been said that the Nile River is considered to be the longest river in the world. It starts from the equator and ends at the Mediterranean Sea. People settled near the Nile River since it provided them with water. It carries dark fertile mud from Central Africa. This made the land of Egypt near the Nile very fertile. Agriculture, animal husbandry, metallurgy, and many others started to sprout. The Nile River's contribution to the creation of civilization to ancient Egypt, thus the term cradle of civilization, was coined. To the New World Encyclopedia, the Museum of Egyptian Antiques, or commonly known as the Egyptian Museum, contains many pieces of history. Not only does it accommodate the world's largest collection of archaeologic pharaonic antiques, it also houses the many treasures of King Tutankhamun and many other interesting statues. One of the interesting pieces I have seen was the statue of Amenhotep III and Queen Tiye. They were the first couple of their nature to rule Egypt. Tiye was the first commoner to rapidly become a royalty and to also become such an influence during her husband's reign. If we try to go back to downtown Cairo, there's a place called Khan El Khalili. This is a major souk in the Islamic district of Cairo. The Bazaar district is one of Cairo's main attractions for tourists and Egyptians alike. Visiting Cairo is incomplete without a stop at Khan El Khalili Bazaar. Shop owners calling you to their stalls, selling scent spices and many other souvenir items. You need to have a good bargaining skill in order to purchase items at a much cheaper cost. And once you're done with your shopping, don't forget to drop by for some good cup of tea with fresh mint leaves at El Fishawi Cafe. So, this sums up my five days long trip to Cairo, Egypt. I hope I was able to encourage and inspire you that anything is possible if you just believe in yourself. When I was younger, I was scared to go out of my comfort zone, but then I realized that I needed to grow. So where to next? Let me know in the comment section below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe. Or you can follow my blogs at www.domesticatedsite.wordpress.com or follow me on Instagram at domesticated site. Okay, bye.